you began to ask me something about this Kundalini energy. Yes. And I said, well, maybe I can talk about it later. Yes. So, what do you want to ask me about it? Um, last year, last year, hmm. um, I had a spontaneous, wonderful, amazing experience. I didn't know what it was at that time. Later, I found out that it's called Kundalini Awakening. Mm. It was the most divine, amazing thing I have ever felt. Nothing can, no words can explain that feeling. Mm. Since then, things have changed. I was wondering after after that after that day if it's possible to to feel that sensations again just by inviting inviting it mm. and it 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 was mm. now I know that uh, I just feel things differently it's not just theory it's uh I just feel the energy around me and uh, not just energy around me, I am that energy. I have no doubts about that because mm -hmm. I have experienced it. If I haven't experienced it, probably there will be times that I would doubt, definitely, because we need some kind of confirmation. Yes. Mm. When you say energy, what you what you mean by that? That you are that energy, because all life is energy. Yes. All life is energy. I just. <clears throat> At one level, of expression, you can say it's all energetic, all this existence. At that moment, what I would just be felt... so different or special about Kundalini energy? You just feel completely different. You 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 feel your body in a different way. You yeah. you, you actually feel beyond your body. Uh, it just it just there are wonderful sensations. Mm. I remember there were a lot of involuntary movements. Mm. It was very scary, <laughs> kind of scary at the moment, but I wasn't afraid because just with any other thing that you know is good for you, you're not you're not afraid. Hmm. Even though at some sometimes, when this energy is climbing up and reaching your throat and your mouth, and you you feel like you're not you're not breathing for some time, but you're not you're not afraid. Hmm. And now, how how is it? Now, it has its ups and downs, but I know that it will be like that in this lifetime. Hmm. Every day will be a, a challenge. So it is an experience. Yes. It comes like all experience; they have beginning, have end, have change. Yes. Mm. But it's not what you are. There's a physicality about it, and <clears throat> it's also sensational. It's a sensation. It comes. There's awareness of it also. Of its presence, of its weakening, of its strengthening, of its coming and going. So it is also a phenomenon that comes and goes. But that is fine. Yes. Nowhere in any form of yoga um, would that be admitted as uh, the supreme state. It is only uh, another sensation, strong, pleasant at times. Uh, as you use the word involuntary uh, in its expression very often. Um, so it's another effect in consciousness. Here we are concerned about the truth, but what really is, in which energies flow, they come and go, but it cannot be described merely in energetic terminology. That is energy, it's coming and going, it's strong, it's light, it's like this. No. These are effects in consciousness. Hmm. And um, 
So either you want to stay with that and, and that becomes your thing that you enjoy uh, this energy and people say you can do this with the energy or that or you want to proceed further into uh, your own nature, your true nature and discover what is uh, timeless in yourself. Immutable, meaning it's not, not affected by energy or by the movement of the body mind, that which is called uh, the pure self. That is what the the topic is here. That's the we we may call it a kind of goal, but I don't want to use these words so much. But uh, the point of the investigation is to be in the direct experience of that, and by direct experience, I don't mean the experience which is the going and coming. But the experience, which simply is one's nature, if you want to, maybe the word is not experience. I don't know. Maybe the word is not experience. I I, I feel that that is something that I have not tried to try, try to achieve. Mm. It just happened. It's mm. it's 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 natural, and mm. I feel that. I have. Uh, we were in India. I think it was a, few, a couple of years ago. And some, a couple, young couple were staying in an apartment very near to where we are staying. And this, uh, the girl, she had been doing this, uh, um, some energy work for quite some time. She was fascinated with that. But um, in the middle of the night, the boyfriend came to the house, was very, uh, very shaken up, and asking for help. Because her body was just flicking on the bed, flicking, and she was terrified. She didn't really know what to do. She was completely terrified. Uh, felt possessed almost. And uh, so I went over there and and stayed with her. Uh, it was not fun. <laughs> it was not fun. She was totally terrified. And to calm those energies down. Then somehow she was exhausted. I would not uh, encourage anyone to play around with energy work and you know, even Shakti Path and all of this uh, uh, thing. If it is shown only for experience, really the real search should be really for the truth, and not for any kind of. Um, uh, Experience. These may come but also unasked for. They can come also naturally. Uh, should we just not relax and whatever comes comes? Should we not relax and whatever comes comes? Sure, nothing wrong with that. Just stay present. This is something that came to me. Yes. You can carry on. You say, stay present. Hmm. But presence is unpracticed. It is just what is. Staying present, or sometimes you may be advised, stay in presence as that. And a little twist. Uh, of consciousness, and the light is there again to see that there is only what is. That is different. But from where you are speaking to say, okay, I just have to stay present. Let what happen happens. Um, sure, why not? I don't want to interfere. If you are sincere, and this is what it means, yeah, I just uh, stay as I am, and whatever happens happens. Then why would you come to a place like this? <clears throat> Actually, that's a. Unlike many people here, I I didn't even know about you before I registered. <laughs> mm. it, it was a strange thing. I just knew I I have a very strong intuition, and I just knew that I had to go somewhere, and some things were coming up, but no, 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 that that wasn't it, mm. and then. Basically, I just heard a day before or something like that before the registration, and I 
I just knew I had to register and then later I, I watched a few of YouTube clips so and I didn't regret it hmm. <laughs> there are many expressions of this uh, form you see it plenty in India because India is such an open place on that level it's very open where you find many um, uh, Expressions of yoga are very uncommon uh, vi- visually in the West. You might find someone standing on one leg for the last eight years, <laughs> or rolling around on the earth for from city to city, which can be hundreds of miles, <laughs> or you know having their head, their legs around their head for you know eleven months. <laughs> Um, and you may say, I don't see the point of it, really, but it is also consciousness, also expressions of consciousness, you can say like that. It is not directly concerned with liberation, but just at the, the powers of consciousness and the vital force and the powers of concentration and of austerities like this you can do. Why do you say that it's not directly concerned with liberation? Because they're not liberated at all. <laughs> they are also they are sometimes just uh, uh, also ego can be very big. You you feel very special and uh, you know like you, people come a crowd around you. You stand there and uh, something feels uh, satisfied with this. Liberation is when you know absolutely, without doubt. Even to say no is not the strongest word to use. You are you are one with that. There isn't a person doing something. There isn't a person having an experience. The whole idea about personhood becomes very, very thin for you. You see sometimes uh, people in states of different states of suffering, emotional, physical, psychological suffering, and you see clearly how it's brought about. That personality is at the root of it, ego is at the root of it. And still there's a stubbornness to, to shift from those positions. But unless the move the power comes inside to to be in contact with that, you don't bother about it. It can be there. But these powers that you speak about, Kundalini energies, and uh, they come and they are moving in the body and they are very beautiful and whatever. Mm. Have you experienced that? Oh, my dear, that's child's play. <laughs> okay, just asking. Please. Um, There are many yogis, probably even here, who have been doing these things or have been having these experiences for years, and now are searching for freedom. There are people who have done incredible things, but they know it's not freedom. There are people who have good following. And students, but they know as yet they have not attained liberation. And they are honest enough to say. So, any of these things, even being able to be in two places at once, it really isn't it. I just want to say that. 
I'm, I'm not doubting these words. I'm mm-hmm. not even asking anybody to believe them. But you ask, I tell you like that. My encouragement is only for those, and not for everybody. I don't feel to go around encouraging people to search for themselves. It's not my place. But some come by themselves. I don't know how, but they come and they have an urge, and somehow this contact happens, and we explore together. And the fruit of that looking is more beautiful in my eyes than any supernatural experiences or any. Um, Siddhi, Siddhic expressions, to see someone coming out of the suffering that is due to false identity. That is the heart's work, if you want to say. <laughs>